in my mind, it's not a question of if, but when. Really? So do you think it, this could happen to you too? Is it possible? Uh, yeah, no, that's, uh, that is definitely possible. I guess, yeah. This is the Sales Babble Podcast, episode 200. It's an anniversary issue and a solo episode with a four step cold calling script. Welcome to Sales Babble, the podcast that shares selling secrets for non sellers. And now your host, Pat Helmers. Hello, sales babblers. This is Pat Helmers. And can you believe it? 200 episodes. Ah, boy. boy, does time fly. And because of this, I'd like to celebrate it by doing a special episode, a solo episode on cold calling. Because cold calling is the most downloaded topic in sales babble. And for good reason. It's a struggle for new sales professionals and seasoned sales professionals alike. Because Every time you get a new job, every time you got a new gig, the people you're selling to are completely different. And what you used to work in the old job may not work in the new job. Before I get started, let's talk about my definition of cold calling. And from the way, way I see it is, it's when you're calling somebody and they're not really expecting it. And you're trying to advance the sale somehow, like get an appointment. I'm hoping that this episode's going to be a foundation so that you can build on it and build your own cold calling script. This episode is going to be broken down into two pieces. The first part is that a recording of a role play of a cold call. It's a fake one. I didn't break anybody's privacy and, uh, and do that. But it'll sound pretty darn real. And the second one is going to be a breakdown of the cold call step by step. I can't cover every possibility. I can't cover every permutation. But again, it's going to give you something that you can build upon. I'd like to do a shout-out to my oldest son, Mike Helmers, who helped me in this role-playing. He's a very experienced SDR. He did this for a number of years for a marketing company. And he's able to do this episode without a lot of coaching. <laughs> and he did a great job acting like a prospect. So thank you, Michael. So with no further ado, let's get to it. This is Mike. Hey, Mike. This is Pat Helmers from Acme Everlast. You and I just connected on LinkedIn. Did I catch you at a bad time? Do you have a minute? Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, just a minute, though. You said your name's Pat? Yes. Um, we help business owners keep their data safe from costly feral squirrel attacks. Have you heard about the squirrel attacks? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they've been uh, popping up quite a bit lately in the news. Well, I'm calling because we have a special assessment program to review your vulnerability to squirrels this month, and we're looking for companies between 20 and 100 employees. And I noticed on your website, do you have a database solution for Oak Forest Management? And, oh, by the way, that, that, that website looks really great. No, oh, well, oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, we paid a lot for that, uh, that website there. Have you guys been attacked by squirrels? Uh, uh, no, I, I, mean, I haven't talked to our person no i don't think so not today not recently or ever now that i think about it yeah what would happen to you guys if you lost the integrity of your database <laughs> oh goodness uh i mean that's kind of what our business is about uh it'd be terrible uh so many people would be pissed about pissed off at us a lot of unhappy uh clients uh have to rebuild from scratch probably mm. uh yeah that would just be the worst Really? Hey, what else? Yeah. What else would happen? Uh, well, I mean, we definitely lose some business uh, from people who currently have us um, as their their service provider, and uh, probably even more from other people because you know people talk. What else? Um, I don't know. I I guess our our uh, we'd have to credit back. Uh, some services to our clients due to the lost business. Um, what else? Yeah. 
that we'd probably miss our financial goals for the year. Oh, that'd be bad, wouldn't it? Oh my God, yes. That would totally hit our ability to expand and uh, increase our revenue. Yeah, I can understand that. Have you guys done an assessment before? Uh, no, we've thought about it before, uh, but it's just not been something that's ever uh, popped up for us before. What's holding you back? Uh, I never really found the time. Really? What else? Yeah. I mean, like... We don't really know if we can trust the results, right? I mean, like, it's like when you download one of those things from the Internet that says, hey, let me check your computer for uh, yeah. viruses, and there's a million viruses on my computer, but we all know there aren't. Yeah. You know, so I don't know if I can really trust the results in that. It just seems like a setup to get us to spend more money. Yeah, I can understand that. I can understand that. So if I understand what you're saying, it sounds like you're concerned about squirrel attacks and you're willing to do something about it, but you're afraid maybe you're going to make a poorly informed decision that it might, and you and you might be concerned it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, I guess so. Mike, we've been doing this for a long time. We just did a company down the street called Soup to Nuts, and we found like 15 breaches because of squirrel attacks. And they said the same thing that you guys said, that, you know, if their system was attacked, it cost them millions. We did that free assessment we did for them for a very economical investment. They were able to remediate their system and avoid calamity. In my mind, it's not a question of if, but when. Really? So do you think this could happen to you, too? Is it possible? Uh, Yeah, no, that's, uh, that is definitely possible. I guess, yeah. Have you ever had your credit card? Have you ever had your credit card number stolen? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it happened to me last week. Yeah, <laughs> me too. It happened last <laughs> last last month. Um, if we were to do an assessment for you guys, who's the person we'd work with? Who's your tech person? Uh, Mary. Mary's our uh, chief technical officer. What's What's her last name? Uh, Smith. Do you think it's possible we could start working with her tomorrow and maybe get an assessment started? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think that's possible. Um, you said it's free, right? Yep. Sure is. Yeah, we could probably make that work. Mike, are you in front of a computer right now? Uh, yeah, I am. I just sent you an email. Okay. Uh, do you see the link? Do you want me to... Just a sec here. Okay. Yeah. If you could fill in Mary's contact information, that would be great. And maybe you could just tell me, what's her phone number? Uh, yeah, just a moment. It's uh, 630-768-3134. What I'm going to do, Mike, is I'm going to get her scheduled for 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 this this week, or it may be early next week, and uh, I'm going to give her a call first thing tomorrow and see if we can get this going. Does that sound good? Uh, yeah, I'll let her know that you're uh, you're going to contact her. When we get done with this, I'm going to want to do a readout with you. Um, I'm going to. Do you have your calendar open right now? Uh, yeah, I do. Would this time next week work? Um, let's see. Yeah, I think I can make that work. Awesome. All right, all right. Mike, I really appreciate it. I think you're going to find a lot of value in this assessment. I, I really appreciate your time here today. Yeah, I'm interested to see what you guys uh, find there. Uh, thanks. I appreciate the call. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yep, bye. So, what'd you think? <laughs> Did that sound real to you? Did it sound like things went a little too smooth? Well, let's walk through the dialogue step by step, and I'm going to explain what's going on. Each statement I made had a reason, and the entire script is choreographed. And let me tell you what some of my goals are. First, my goal is to connect with the prospect so that they agree to have a conversation. My second thing is I want to discover their pains and their desires. Third thing, I want to assess if they're qualified to buy my products or services. Next, 
I want to show how my products and services address their problems and address their desires, the ones that they just mentioned. Fifth, I want to get them to agree to a follow-up meeting and to get an appointment. And that was the whole point of having the assessment, is to get an appointment, to have a long conversation with them. And sixth, my goal is to set up this appointment in just a few minutes, not to make it too long. I got some assumptions here about the script, and I assume that you've done your homework and that you've got a good idea who's your qualified buyer. You can learn amazing things about people on social media and their website and the demographics of the customers they serve. This all assumes that you've done that, that you've figured out your value proposition. We've covered the value proposition in length already, but if you can't easily explain that you serve a specific market with a specific set of needs and desires by providing a specific product, service, or solution that has a set of specific benefits that the customer will appreciate. I help business owners keep their data safe from costly feral squirrel hackers and preserve the integrity of their data. You should know your value proposition backwards and forwards, and it should just come out of your mouth so quickly and so smoothly whenever ever anybody ever asks you, what do you do? If you can share this proposition, then you can reach the goal of any cold call, and that's to schedule an appointment. So here's the first step in setting up a cold call. Step number one, call. Pick the phone up, read the script, which will give you confidence, by the way, because you know what you're going to say, and get permission to engage in a conversation. Ask them by name and mention how you know them. Now, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of LinkedIn, and I use it to warm them up. This is what people always call social selling. When you see those ads out there that say, never cold call again, that's what they're talking about. But it doesn't have to be social selling. You could also say, I met you at a networking meeting or a conference or someone recommended that I reach out to you. Make it seem natural that you and they have a common connection and that it makes sense for the two of you to be communicating. Next, when they give you a minute of their time, the power shifts from them to you. Remember I asked Mike, is this a bad time? Is this a bad time to call? And he said, no, I only got a minute. As soon as he did that, he abdicated power and he gave it to me. They're giving you permission to take a bit of their time. Use the gift wisely. And then next, quickly get to the punch by sharing your value proposition. That was step number one. Step number two, share a reason. In this situation, we got a special offer going on. The reason doesn't need to be all that important. Maybe you're just going to be in town next week. The reason I'm calling is I'm going to be in your neighborhood next week. Or maybe the reason I'm calling is we just launched a new product. You always have to have a reason. Make it short and sweet. That's step number two. Step number three, qualify. And we do this by asking questions and deeply listening. Because when you listen, you can figure out if the prospect's qualified. Notice how I immediately started asking them questions. I have found over time that the more I can get them to talk, the higher the likelihood I can advance the sale. I try turning this into a natural conversation, not a presentation or worse, a lecture. I'm not one to fall into this selling telling thing. I actually have an internal timer in me that if I've been talking myself more than a couple minutes, it immediately fires off and I start getting concerned and worried. I'm afraid I'm boring them. So the way I get around this is I ask them lots of questions. And by asking questions, I know that they're engaged. Notice, too, how I complimented them. In this case, I said nice things about their website. No matter how good or bad it is, it taught me something. I got a lot of value out of it. It gives you insight into their company. Now, when I was doing outside sales calls and, ste and stepping into somebody's building, I commonly complimented on the building or their room or maybe something they got on the wall. I find something to connect with them as a human being. Do what comes natural as if you're talking to somebody you already know. Next, I kept asking them questions and truly listening to their answers. 
Have you been attacked? If you got attacked, what would happen? What would it cost you? Discover their pain and the ramifications of their pain. I also tried to find out if they've got competition. Remember I asked them if they'd done an assessment before? I don't cut them off when they're talking. I try to keep the conversation going by asking, what else? What else? That ability to ask what else is extremely powerful. When I was in college, I was working for this marketing company. I, did, I would do this over the summer. And I was one of those people who would stand with a clipboard in the mall asking people questions about consumer products like cars and rice and beer. And the one trick they taught us was to say, what else? After every open-ended question. It was amazing what people would say. Oftentimes, it was the third, fourth, or fifth what else that I asked that I really got into the thing that mattered most to them. By digging into them and understanding their true pains and desires, you can know whether or not they're qualified for your products and services. When they bring up an argument like, well, I don't know if I got time, it might cost money, don't argue or debate the objections. They're concerned about, it's always about the same kinds of things they're concerned about. It's about either cost or quality, profit, time, or being conned. And you can't blame them, given all the sketchy salespeople out there. What I like to do is let them know that I'm respectful of them, and that's why I'm listening. People do like to talk about themselves. I let them. Once all the what else's are done, then show them how you can overcome their concerns. For example, I mentioned a past successful client. I offered a free service to instigate a follow-up in an in-person sales call. And if they actually said, if they actually said to me, well, can I go talk to them? I would say yes, because that's the kind of references and re that you want to give people who truly love you. Once they agree that they have a problem, that's a huge step forward. In this case, I asked them about the possibility of doing a free assessment, right? I started acting like the employee of the company and helping them figure it out. When can we work this in? And who's that right staff? Oh, it's Mary? But the cold call could have gone another place. I could have instead said something like, you mentioned that you were busy right now. Is there a better time that we could talk? How about in two weeks? Remember, the whole goal of this phone call is to get scheduled some kind of one-on-one -on -one appointment. Notice, too, how I often ask about possibility. This way, I don't get a real hard no answer, because almost anything's possible. If they can agree to a possibility, you're advancing the sale. So that was step three, qualifying. So now I've decided that they are qualified that they do have problems that might make sense for us to fix. My goal now is to get on their calendar so they can fully share their value proposition you know, with a fair amount of time. Giving away free stuff is a great way to get people's interest. In marketing, right, they call these things lead magnets. But it's got to be something that makes sense in the context of their offering. In this case, we're giving away a free assessment, but it could be a quick document or an article that makes the prospect just a little bit wiser and a little bit well-informed. There's just so much data out there on the internet. People just get over, overwhelmed by all of it. If you can like ease that and make that easier for them, people appreciate it. Sure, pens and post-it notes and coffee cups, uh, those are interesting things. But in some regards, they don't have as much value as a well-written five-step checklist that's pertinent to their industry, to the problems their company faces. Again, the goal of the call is to get an appointment. And in this case, we're trying to schedule a meeting to go over the assessment. I'm using the assessment as a way of getting that meeting. And while you got them on the phone, notice how I had them pull up their calendar. Because if I try to call them back in a couple days, it may be really, really difficult. Don't say you're going to call them back to set up a time. Never leave a call without a follow-up scheduled. And that was step four, schedule the appointment. What's the mindset here? Is to have an attitude, I'm here to help my customer. I'm not going to be taking advantage of them. I'm not, I want to earn their trust for life. And if I can't help them, 
hey, maybe I know somebody who can help them. I'm just here to help. Another mindset I have is I try to treat everybody like a distant cousin. Someone you, know, you see once someone you see once in a while, you know them, but you may not know them all that well, but there's a certain familiarity with them. Not like a close friend that you would tease, <laughs> but a cousin. Think about your family, your close friends, your colleagues, and your community, and the skills used to build teams and to help one another, to listen to people, to go the extra mile and a partner. These are the same skills that can make you successful in sales. Sales, in my mind, isn't something like separate from life. It is life. And what works with people who are close to you also works in sales. So does that make sense? The great thing about a podcast is you can listen to it over and over and over and try to better understand how it fits for you. I'm going to place a copy of this role play in a breakdown of the parts of uh, in a breakdown of the parts in the show notes and you can find those at www.salesbabble.com/200. I anticipate comments from listeners on how this script doesn't work for them. <laughs> I, I totally get that. I could have taken this script a dozen different ways. I struggle to keep this episode to a reasonable length. And in most cases, this exact script probably is not going to work for you. But like I said, my hope is that it is some kind of, of a foundation for you. But if you like, I'd be happy to work with you on your script. And from the time this podcast is published till the 28th of February, the first 10 listeners who schedule a free one-hour call with me, can I'll help you build your script. Go to uh, www.salesbabble.com slash cold call and enter the promo code cold call, and you can schedule an appointment for free. That's for the first 10 listeners. Now, the cool thing about podcasts is that they're evergreen. And you could be listening to this episode long past January 2017. If you want me to partner with you and help you build a script, I would love to lend a hand. Cold calling is an art. It takes a lot of finesse. It takes a lot of listening. If you listen to what they're saying truly listen, you're going to know what to say. Don't rush it. Even though Mike here said, I only got a minute. He kept answering my questions. He can hang up anytime he wants. Keep trying to discover what his problems are and that if, and that if you can help. One of the past episodes, we talk about the sort method where we try to understand his story, his obstacles, the ramifications of, his, of those obstacles. And what it would mean for his company if you could transform that, if you could make those go away. It's that whole same idea. Keep digging in. Keep asking questions. Keep listening. And then when it feels like you're there, when they get that you just might be able to help them, just get them a little extra step. Get them to like schedule a meeting so that you can come meet them. Or maybe give them something, like in this case. Next week, Phil Bossier is going to be our guest. I saw him at a TEDx talk in Naperville, and he's going to talk about how to tune up your sales brain. Until next week, take care, and have a highly successful selling day. Thank you for listening to the Sales Babble Podcast. Find us at www.salesbabble.com. Thank you.